Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim, and today what we wanna talk about is uh, the WRO. And for those of you that don't know what the WRO is, that's the World Robot Olympiad. Now, everyone should know, or if you don't, I'm gonna tell you that Tetrix, the birth of Tetrix was based in competition. That's the way the original set was designed. And it's always been a very strong part of the Tetrix experience to be able to use this in competition. And one of the competitions that's been around now for a couple of years is the WRO. This is a global competition and it's got several different categories, but what makes it important for Tetrix is that in the last couple of years, they've created a, a college category that um, previous two years were pilots, but this year the official first uh, sanctioned college event is gonna take place. And in support of that, Tetrix has created a WRO, WRO specific set that we're gonna offer for sale for those college teams all across the world that wanna compete in this competition. And so what I wanna to talk to you about today is that specific set, some of the aspects of it, and the solution that we've created uh, for that specific game out of our uh, basic WRO set. So um, we're going to get right into that as far as let's talk about the game a little bit. This year's game, the 2015 uh, college level category, is a bowling game. The idea is that a robot has to pick up uh, a, basically a snooker ball and roll it down uh, a bowling lane and actually knock over um, smaller scale size uh, bowling pins. So to do that, there's several things that uh, you have to take into consideration. We actually have to have a mechanism that can um, retrieve the ball. We have to have some kind of a way of rolling the ball or pitching the ball down the lane toward the bowling pins. So that was a little bit of my design parameters when I started to create this basic robot. And the idea was when we created the robot that we wanted to um, show not the specific or ultimate solution, but a basic solution to those kind of uh, problems. They had to be able to pick up the ball, had to be able to roll it down uh, the lane. And uh, we wanted to do that with uh, a minimal amount of parts uh, to show that there is the basic functionality involved, um, but still be able to solve that problem or that challenge. So this is what we came up with. Now I want to start by saying that all of the parts in this specific robot are going to be in our WRO set. So that's the first thing we want to make sure that you understand is that everything you see here plus more will be in the WRO set. Um, so let's start off just by looking a little bit uh, at the robot itself and I'm going to kind of rotate this around a little bit so you can see some of the aspects of it. We've got two DC drive motors that are providing um, a drive to the, to the robot. They have optical high resolution encoders for navigation so that we can uh, tell uh, via the rotation of the encoders where the robot is at. Uh, we have four inch um, drive wheels um, that are um, very versatile, gear, gonna give good traction. In the back we have actually have uh, on this specific design, this is a tribot design, I have a four inch omni wheel that allows for um, ease of navigation and rotation, should be very good mobile robot. Um, I've got uh, right here, you're gonna see a standard uh, 180 degree uh, 485 uh, hobby servo that gives uh, 180 degrees of motion, but you'll see on this particular robot, I have that geared. I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it. And because of that gearing, I have a, at least 90 degrees of motion there. And on this side, you'll see that I have, in addition to a, uh, the standard servo on this side, I have a continuous rotation servo on this side that powers basically as a lifting motion with this linear slide and uh, a worm gear, uh, a, a rack gear on this a linear slide that will provide a lifting motion. Uh, and that does come as part of the WRO starter set. I've got our typical Tetrix uh, C channel that provides a very robust, very sturdy frame. And then I also have uh, a lot of the flat um, bar pieces that uh, again, you can see with this specific seat uh, piece that I've created my own channel 
that is uh, in the same size alignment as our uh, basic channel, just on the outside of that with our 32 millimeter spacers. And um, it comes with the uh, DC motor controller and servo controller. Again, I'm gonna move this kind of around so you can see as part of our basic WRO set and a 12 volt battery. So all of that comes including a charger with the basic set on off switch. Uh, and let me just kind of give you a, a brief rundown of what our uh, perception of the solution would be. So here I've got my snooker ball. And if you've ever um, felt a snooker ball, it's got, it's got a pretty good heft to it, got some weight to it. But the idea is that the robot will be able to navigate to the fixture that holds the ball, be able to pick that ball up with the servo. With the continuous rotation uh, servo, I will be able to lift that ball up, all the way up. And the idea is that then I would navigate to where I wanted to release the ball. I would pivot that arm up and the ball would roll off the back down the floor to the bowling pins. So you can see it's a very simple design. Um, there's not a lot of complicated parts to it. Um, I've, I've actually uh, created a solution here that, that should be able to solve the basic challenge with a very minimal amount of parts. So what that allowed us to do is provide extra pieces in this set that's gonna give uh, the college kids that decide to participate in this a lot of latitude in their design um, and when they approach and problem solve uh, for that specific game challenge. So the other thing that I just wanted to point out with these, these flat bar pieces um, and the 32 millimeter spacers one of the challenges that we've had in the past with the Tetrix building system has always been to um, maintain alignment and spacing. And you'll see here that with the, the proper use of the flat pieces, that I've been able to do that and maintain the design integrity of the, cha the channel and still provide a very robust, robust solution. So that's an idea of what our basic suggested of what a typical solution for the WRO challenge for 2015 would be. Hope you got uh, some tips from that, maybe some ideas. Um, for more information about the WRO challenge, uh, we invite you to look on the Tetrix Robotics webpage for the WRO specific challenge. And maybe uh, some additional video coming soon about the robot actually in action so you can see what it looks like. So thanks for joining us today and uh, come back and enjoy building those robots.